guys, uh, Roy Rakovich from Windsign. Um, today we're going to be running some fuel consumption tests on our Axial Flux Lister engine. Uh, basically it's a Listeroid, it's, a, it's an Indian copy. Uh, I had purchased this probably uh, end of 2007, early 2008. Uh, got it here, built a base up for it, got it mounted, uh, started playing around with it. Um, took it apart, rebuilt it, cleaned it up, and we built an Axial Flux alternator for it. Uh, basically to serve as our backup generator um, because we live off-grid so um, we didn't need a backup generator it's just nice to have um, you know just in case <laughs> so uh, I can't take credit 100% for this uh, this design actually um, comes uh, from the fact that uh, Dan Bartman from Colorado uh, otherpower.com had uh, built a very similar setup um, to directly push power into his 48 volt battery bank uh, we are doing the same exact thing. Uh, he actually uh, built his about two to three weeks prior to this one being finished, so we kind of were doing it at the same time, I guess. Um, he, have, of course, finished his first. Uh, so uh, basically, the only difference between his setup and this setup is that he's pushing power through a rectifier directly into the 48 volt battery bank. Um, we are taking the voltage at a slightly higher level, rectifying it, feeding it into an MX60 PowerPoint tracking charge controller, um, and doing a buck conversion on it and trying to squeeze out a little bit more efficiency. Um, it works best with a higher uh, alternator voltage. Um, at one point, the alternator voltage was higher than my battery bank voltage. Since that time, we changed to a higher voltage system. So uh, unfortunately, I lost some efficiency. At one point uh, in the future, I may build a 100, 100 volt uh, alternator instead of a 48 volt. But currently, it's a 48 volt nominal alternator. Um, Let's see how this thing starts. It starts by hand, you gotta crank it. So we use this hand crank here. You gotta be re real careful when doing this. Turn the fuel on. Hear the ejector clicking. Set up for about 630 RPM. Currently running on road diesel. We're going to run some tests. So we're running some more uh, fuel consumption tests on the Lister engine uh, today. Um, here you can see the uh, charge controllers uh, set up. Um, we run our axial flux uh, alternator into an MX60 to do PowerPoint tracking on the alternator. So right here we are uh, getting the engine up to temperature and we're uh, drawing approximately a 1500 watt load, slightly under. But just for argument's sake, uh, measuring the current um, out of the uh, controller against what the controller is telling me on the screen. Um, See, we see about 29 amps on the screen and uh, about 29 amps on the controller. A little shaky, but uh, it's close. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep the uh, load consistent throughout the uh, uh, period we're measuring here so we don't get any discrepancies in our calculations in the end. Um, so we got to get the engine up to, up to uh, temperature here. Uh, currently, we're running on road diesel. See that yellow stuff in the tube? We got a graduated cylinder uh, hanging up here. Once we burn through enough fuel to get it up to temperature, we'll mark the low side and pour in 500 milliliters of uh, fuel. And we'll time how long it takes for that fuel to reach the bottom fill mark. At the same time, we're uh, measuring the time the engine's running and the energy it's producing. And we'll do some calculations at the end. We have the uh, output from the injector running back into the filter, uh, so there's no discrepancy of fuel going back into the tank. We're not using this tank at all here. Uh, strictly pulling fuel out of this tube, out of the cylinder. Uh, that's all it is. We got a changeover valve here to run on vegetable oil. Let's check on the RPM right here. 
We're running about 630 RPM. All right, so here's the other side of the uh, engine. Um, you can actually see the actual flux wall cleaner on the front of it here. Um, see how we have three phase power coming out the bottom. That's what actually feeds over to the rectifiers and then into the MX-60 to do the power point tracking on the alternator. Um, if you look up, uh, you see that I kind of uh, constructed a muffler out of a propane tank. Uh, a lot of people do this. Um, uh, a lot, uh, at least a lot of people in the listed community that I know uh, like to make homemade stuff. Uh, you can get a homemade muffler. Uh, Works pretty good. Quiets the thing right down. Um, I guess uh, also to note, this machine is also set up to run on vegetable oil. Um, you can see the veg oil tank up there sitting on the shelf, um, secured to the shelf. Uh, uh, in a minute or so, I'm going to go over and change it over, and we're going to take a, a noise comparison uh, running on diesel versus running on veg, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear the difference, although the microphone on this camera uh, is, uh, is a very good microphone. so. Um, may or may not hear the difference. Oh, my fingers crossed though. All right, so here you have the engine uh, running on vegetable oil. Um, the veg oil tank is uh, on that shelf right there. Um, basically, it feeds down through a tube into a stainless steel uh, shell and tube heat exchanger on the cool and output of the motor. Um, they're running a 190 degree thermostat, I think, uh, in the coolant port. So uh, it gets heated basically up to uh, approximately 190 degrees um, and then feeds down through an insulated line uh, into the changeover valve, which is also insulated, um, and then into the injector. So that basically allows us to uh, run on waste vegetable oil. Of course, it needs to be uh, filtered and dewatered and stuff first. Um, but you can basically hear the difference, hopefully. Um, it's a lot quieter, uh, you know, more peaceful and easier to live around. We kind of like that. So, so it's the sound of free electricity and the smell of free electricity. Thanks for watching.